morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Igaga, and as always, I welcome you to the one and only show that lights up your Wednesday night. Wednesday nights can be boring, but with men, it just can't get any better. Now, last week, we had a very interesting talk. We were talking about men and planning, strategic planning in terms of having a vision and a mission, not only for you as a man, but also for your family. So this week, we followed it up, and we're going to be talking about succession. But we all know that a man's world doesn't go anywhere without a woman in it. So we have a woman on the show who actually has told us before we went on air that she is more woman than any man could ever think of. I'll let you be the judge. Ruth, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Peter. Good to have you here. Welcome to the Naguru Skies Hotel. This is arguably one of the most beautiful places in this city. And I think it's befitting for a lady as beautiful as you. What do you think? I just love. I just love the breeze. I love the breeze. Yes. I'm yes. inhaling <coughs> and exhaling. All right, great stuff. Good to have you here. Now, um, we know that one of the challenges we have generally, and I can specifically talk about Africans, is succession planning. But now we want to narrow it down to to men. Do you think a man is responsible for the succession planning of his family? Or is it something that everybody should figure out on their own? Well, first of all, I believe that uh, succession planning is a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And um, that means that it's a responsibility for everybody. Mm -hmm. We must look at the family. And if a man is truly the head of the family, then he needs to drive that process mm -hmm. and be able to be able to set in place if I'm out of the equation what happens next yeah do I does the family fall apart um, mm -hmm. is there somebody to take over normally in our patriarchal society you have to have an heir but nowadays you're looking at a situation where uh, more women are managing their father's estates and mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 there's a change, a paradigm shift yeah. in that regard. So I believe the uh, head of the household, mm -hmm. and um, if you're a single mom, you need to, everybody needs to plan their exit yeah. and uh, leave a plan in order. Okay, great stuff. Stefan, you claim that you don't believe in succession planning. You believe in figuring it out as you go along. You know, yeah, that's an interesting way of, uh, you know, yeah, 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 but I mean, you said but it you before know, we went uh, on there. <laughs> you know, uh, as, as guys, we are not really, uh, we are not, uh, there is no proper plan uh, that, you know, men have, you know. You, you're born and uh, you have to fend for yourself, you know. As, you know, she mentioned, patri you know, patriarchy, patriarchy in itself, you know, uh, as a guy, you're, you're born in this system where society uh, believes that you have to fend for yourself. Mm -hmm. And most guys, let's be honest, most guys, someone actually told me the other day that uh, I use most, uh, let's be honest, as a, it's, yes. it's my <laughs> use favorite, it a lot. it's my favorite <laughs> phrase, mm -hmm. but most guys just, just get in the picture and you, and, and you handle it like that. We are not really groomed but so for succession. But, 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 um, I'll say yes or no, and I'll tell you why. Um, you're a father now, okay? So don't you hey, think... Hey, hey. Yeah. revelation. <laughs> I'm a father, and I've seen it on different platforms. I'm a, father. Uh, yeah, I'm a yeah. very proud father. But never on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Peter okay. outing our secrets. Okay. It's out, and it's... <laughs> it's out, cut, cut it's out there now. And he's border border. And now, don't you think <laughs> your little one, I'll not say whether it's a boy or a girl, Really? It's, it's going to learn a lot from you, especially just by seeing the things you do. And I, I told you, before we, uh, we had a chat before we went on air, and I said, uh, I think a lot of men don't know that part of the succession plan is the way you behave in front of your kids, the things they see you do, because that's what they're exposed to and that's what they, they learn how to do. Yeah. And, and I told you off air, and uh, I told you that, you know, it is so weird that uh, at, at my age, I, I, I'm just realizing that I behave like my father in so many different ways, you know. Yeah. And uh, like echoing from what you're saying, 
uh, I think that's the, the succession you're talking about because there is no uh, there is no proper or uh, something definite that you know uh, our fathers did mm -hmm. to uh, to make us you know or, or to build us into who we are in our lives. I, I, I want to sort of get in here and and disagree uh, yeah. diametrically. I think that these children of privilege. <laughs> they, they, they sometimes, I think they, they, don't, they don't fully appreciate the things that have gone into making their lives easy. Mm -hmm. So if you think about, and I'm going to use most men, most people, most of us, our grandparents didn't go to school. So a very small number of people had grandparents who were educated. The grandparents' only struggle was to say, I wish my child can go to school either secondary school, HSC, university. The parents who actually managed to take their children to university, they were seen and is, they were prized in the village, in the community. They were hailed because they had educated children. Those parents, our parents, our parents' generation, then said they wanted their children to do more. So they wanted more from them. They wanted them to go to do master's degrees, to go and achieve more in life. But then you now come to our generation. And you still have people like this who are squandering everything that's been given to them. <laughs> and, and sort of just... <laughs> no, no, no. But, but so our parents weren't saying you have to go to school. Our parents strive to give us the ability to do whatever we wanted to do. The freedom. So you, I mean, if you think about Peter, Peter is a TV show host. Like, like his dad sweated so he can come out here and just open his mouth on national TV. Like, no, I'm just saying, like, you could have done more, but, but what... <laughs> But see where you are. The, 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 the I'm just saying, our names. parents <laughs> yeah. wanted for us to have freedom. What we then pass on to our children is a different, you know, it's, it could be a different set of values, it could be a different set of uh, the, uh, freedom of what they want to do, where they want to go. But, but I think that it's important to say that across generations you can always see yeah. a plan of sort of, and, and some, again, I always say, we are not all equal. Some of us are better than others. Some of us are just evolved to be superior men than other but, men. But then, uh, C Colin, mm -hmm. um, that to me sounds very textbookish, and I'll tell you. I don't you, know why uh, you keep talking like this. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, clearly, we do have a problem, because if you look at the, um, even our generation, okay, you cannot compare them with our parents. I, I believe our parents were harder working, more discipline, mm. then what happened? If there was a succession plan, then what happened? So, so <laughs> I, I, I think that that what we actually have is, is not necessarily succession planning, mm -hmm. but, but the general notion of every father and every mother that their ceiling will be their children's floor. Mm -hmm. It's the whole idea that where that, that, that where I've stopped, my child should begin from and go yeah. higher. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of like the inherent desire of every parent. Mm -hmm. As to whether there is a plan to it, mm -hmm. um, is where the debate is. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, I have found people few and far in between who actually have plans. Yeah. Right? Who, who will tell you, um, uh, this is what I, I desire for my child to be. This is where, this is what I'm doing about it. Um, this is how much resource I've put in place. This is how much I've equipped them. Yeah. Uh, because you see, that what we need to do for the next generation has got to be uh, intentional, structured, and disciplined learning. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lot like what, what happens in... Um, say it in a church space when we're talking about discipleship. <laughs> no, seriously. Amen. No, seriously. That you have to take us there. Oh, of course. <laughs> because this year is a lot for you to learn. <laughs> no, but seriously, think yeah. about it. Um, it's got to be intentional, structured, and disciplined learning. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, you know, why a short while ago, I, I, I was part of a, you know, I, I, I was invited to a party where, um, uh, you know, some, some people who have achieved quite some in society mm. were celebrating their kids who are under 30. And, and their kids um, had been selected in Africa, Forbes Africa, um, as part of the 30 who are under 30, mm. who have been successful, right? And, and it just, it's very clear to see that, that these kids are following in the footsteps of their dads and moms who are great business people. 
right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you hear the story, what you get to hear is they wanted to, you know, having done a degree, they want to go off and study this and study that. And the parents say, hey, boots on the ground. You just started a business. You need to look after it until it grows to something. Mm -hmm. All right, stay that's, focused. That's like the 1% of society. No, right? I'm <laughs> yeah. giving an example. Yeah. My point is, I, I've, I've given an example because, well, that's a shining example. Model mm -hmm. to follow. But my point is, you're going to find that whether it's about business or academia, mm -hmm. um, more pro professors usually raise academics in their homes. Some, some guys get it, go off, I mean, in, in a professor's home. But most of the time, you find that the, the professor's kids find reading easy... Uh, they're studious, they may not go into the discipline of their dads or moms, but, but they, 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 they're, they're, they're learned in some ways yeah. that, that the professor is learned. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that because we've got skills that we should be able to pass on, I, I love music, I, I love communication, so and like so, so you're Cruz, going to find that... Baby Cruz is going to pass his, his music instruments Maybe. To, no, 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 no. But, 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 but I'm saying, like, for me, uh, my, my, well, it depends. <laughs> but, but our kids, for example, are into music. Mm -hmm. Our son plays, like, about four or five instruments quite proficiently. Our daughter loves to sing. But, you see, it's, it's a thing that I have that yeah. I can be able to pass on. Uh -huh. Or communication or different things are that I'm able to do. Are you a musician? Yes, I am. All right. Oh. All right. So I may not be as proficient as my son is right now because uh, he's, he's really good. But but I, I can get to play something. I yeah. I think yeah. I think that I think that it's very interesting that you know you gave the example of academics because it's it's quite you know common speak that people say that pastors and reverends raise alcoholic children, <laughs> parents you know deviant children. But that, that, that's that, I mean most yeah times, there's some black sheep, but I yes. can also show you so many pastors. Mm who've raised kids who are not that way. I agree. My point is, I, and I'm, I, listen, I'm not saying that every parent <laughs> does a great job at, 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 at developing the next generation to yes. their aspirations. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying... What I'm saying... What Chris has explained is this. There's only 1% of society that you know, actually plans, it's, it's, has that succession plan. You know? So everyone comes down to my argument. Our parents don't really plan. You know, the only planning they have is go to school, study. And then you figure it out. Well, you figure it out. I, I, I disagree with that. Point. Yes, and uh, we, we, we have to get into a break. But as soon as we come back, there's one of our viewers who did uh, say something very interesting on Facebook that he believes one of the reasons why there isn't a lot of succession planning is because women are the crushers of men's dreams. Is that one. true? We'll find out when we come back oh. from the break. Welcome back from the break. In case you've just joined us, you have reached, you've come in at the best time. This is right in the middle of the show that's talking about succession. We're here at the Naguru Skies Hotel and having a great time enjoying the breeze. Don't forget, this is your show. Go to our Facebook page and hit it just like the person who's thrown a spanner in the works. Again, disclaimer, it wasn't me, all right? And we want to hear from you. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our handles are right there on your screen. Miss Yoruna, I'm not the one who said it, okay? But there could be some element of truth. Because if a man doesn't get the right support, okay, and he, he does, he's not able to focus, by the time he's, he's done and dusted, he's all over the place, he can't have a succession plan. I believe the initial statement I made was that secession must be intentional. If you are a man and you're the head of the household, you must drive the process. And I'll give my own personal example. My late father, he would sit down and discuss his departure. This is a topic that most men don't want to discuss, or most anybody, they don't want to discuss that if I'm not around in my absence, A, B, and C should be done. And actually, in, in our culture, in Buganda, it's taboo. To discuss your departure because then that is know, it Chris precipitate yes, Chris is, uh, the, moves the process the even further but he would sit us down and say you know what I am traveling to this country he traveled quite a bit he worked with an NGO world vision and they would take him to 
these very remote places. So he would sit us down and say, this is my will. If anything happens to me, make sure that you do the following. And unfortunately, again, I'm using a, a personal example. He passed away on Uganda Airlines at crashed in Rome. We knew what was going to happen. We knew that there was a will. We knew that there was life insurance. We knew, yes. So I believe that as the head of the household, you must drive the process. Whether you're a single mother, you must have a will. You must have some kind of documentation that needs to be followed once you're out of the equation. It's imperative because you see so many uh, families end up in a mess and no one knows which direction to take. But, but then, the assets are lost. But, but then could that be a question? And I'll speak from a man's point of view. If I have a spouse who I'm not sure about, okay, then you can't blame me. For not having a plan? Yeah. Peter. For sharing my plan. Peter, Peter, Peter. So, so let's just talk about this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, let's go back to the beginning and ask the why. Yeah. Why aren't people planning? Mm -hmm. You can find the money to pay school fees. You can find the money to do insurance. Mm -hmm. You can plan that you will drink every... I have the every, answer for that. Wait, wait. I have wait. the answer. <laughs> I'm coming to you. Uh -huh. You can plan to drink every weekend. Mm -hmm. Month in, month out. Mm -hmm. But if you ask guys, how many of you have a will? Because you see, life is not eternal. Yes. Well, Chris would argue, you know, differently, <laughs> spirit body. But life is a very finite thing. So the more you ignore it, the more you put off the inevitable. Is it a woman's role, and sort of coming back from where we were last week about mission and vision setting, is it the woman's role to say, this is what you're going to leave behind? No. Your role is to say, as head of house, to say, this is the plan. Because I am not immortal, I'm going to die. People would just die every day these days. But, but you see, um, and I'll tell you about this is there's somebody I know who went through that. Okay, who unfortunately for them, the the the, he was a very very bright guy. Okay, extremely bright. Did a lot of good things. When he dropped dead, chaos. Nobody knows anything, including his own wife. But then when you looked at his wife and you looked at him, you kind of understood. Where the problem what was. What are you saying, Peter? Peter, 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 and you know, I, and uh, I was going to answer you. The reason why you know most men don't have uh, succession plans is because most men are dubious. What? Very dubious. I mean, it, and you know, I loved what she says. Uh, she said that you know it has to be intentional. I remember when my dad was diagnosed with uh, with cancer, prostate cancer, and uh, you know uh, everything was you know everything was a mess. You know, uh, he they took him to the hospital. We knew that he would die any minute. That's when we found out so many different things. I found out that I have four different brothers <laughs> from four different women. This is a true story. Okay. So you're for laughing, but... Yeah, we, we discovered that my dad has houses, a house somewhere, somewhere very far. He has a house in Uganda. And, and, and these are some of the reasons why... Yeah, it's true. Men are very dubious. And you know, and men come from a platform where they're inheriting, uh, uh, they're inheriting a habit that they are that's it. So, 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 it so, so, so just, just so that we do not wrap up the whole nation into this dubious theory. And angst. No, it is not. Confusion. No, no, seriously. <laughs> I, I, whereas I, I, I totally understand how frustrating and annoying uh, your experience was. And no, I no, know, me, I, I, me I and my dad are very I, cool. I, and, I know, wait, and I know that there's also a number of people who've gone through that. I also know that there are men who, A, and dubious, B, have actually been able to say what their will is. Um, but, but the anger I actually want to bring in, which is slightly different, is I don't necessarily think that the, the, the plan or, or, or the, the will, most of the plan, must be written. <laughs> I think that it's possible for the will to be lived out. And, and hear me That's out a here. very dangerous and, thing. No, no, seriously, hear me out here. 
I, I, I have um, today's story show so well. I'll, I'll share another one. Um, I, I have I have I an have uncle. No stories. Are you sure? <laughs> I, have, I have an uncle who, who um, he passed on, but but while he still lived, he had like about four properties and he had four kids, mm -hmm. and and he made it clear to those kids and to everyone who cared to listen, this house is yours. So when he's going to check out that house, he goes with this kid and he says, this will be your property after I'm gone. Everybody in the family knew. There was no, there was no fighting. It's like when he passed on, everyone knew what belongs to them because he lived out his plan and his will. Another one... But Chris, there's, uh, a, there's a reason I, why pe that, that word he, will is there Peter, and that document is there. Peter, <laughs> just, just listen, listen to me. Uh, because I'm, I'm trying to give you an alternative because there's some people who are totally petrified by paperwork, all right? And, 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 and what I am saying, seriously, How? and what I am saying is that it's possible to live out your will. Uh, um, another person who I know um, was running a business. He built a business, built it, and it became quite successful by the time he passed on. But, but his will was very clear. He was a business partner with his wife. They co-owned shares. And they, as directors, would decide who would be able to take over the, the business after he passed on. Um, so when he passed on, you know, it's like he had already trained his kids in the business and they had already agreed kind of on which child is going to be taking over and so the, the wife executed the plan but but you could see that there is a lived out plan a lived out will he went shopping with this kid showed him all the suppliers both in uganda and abroad showed him all the business connections and things like that so it's very clear that he's being groomed so, for the role so Another Ruby. one is the Kavaka ship, for example. You talked about Buganda. Let's talk about Buganda. Um, for every generation, it's very clear to see which prince is most probably going to be the next king. Except now. In, um, you'll be surprised. It's actually very clear. Um, uh, if you're in Buganda, you would know which one it is. Don't, just don't ask about his man. That's the key. But, but it's usually very clear. <laughs> Right, how the I child shows up, open. where the Yes, you did. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, what, how, what, you know, how they are presented to the public, the kinds of places they go, etc, etc. So my point is that, from time immemorial, um, the plan not being written did not mean there is no plan. But, so but, but, Peter, 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 I want to just, add just, another just, just, I want to add okay, another right, and, right. and, and this is important. So, I think that the thing that we haven't talked about is the change in sort of the, the, the family dynamic. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you see this, the reason why there is mayhem in certain families is because traditionally, when you pass on, if you pass on, when you pass on, your community, your family, your brothers, would sort of absorb your family. So your family wasn't left alone. Yeah. Yes? So in certain cultures, you had, you know, uh, people your brother would marry your wife, your wife, your, wife, yeah. your widow. Yeah, but, that's but not also, a good thing. But that's, also, they would, but they would also make sure your children were not dispossessed. So they, your uncles would take your property, because you were their brother, and if they had died, you would So there was that community sense. Mm -hmm. I think that the dissolution of that culture... So, so a lot of people come from a culture where that's the practice. So if your father didn't do a plan because he assumed the land was going to be given out to all the children, why? Why are men facing the challenge now? Is because they come from that culture. So now they come from a place where you're the head of house. It's on you. If your children starve, it's on you. If your wife is dispossessed, it's on you. And that pressure is a lot. So Certainly. I actually think that more than Chris's, you know, far-fetched theory, <laughs> that that's why a lot of men... Sorry, because because, because uh, the whole country which, has more tribes yes, than the Baganda. Which, which comes down a lot to what I was saying. And um, not in a bad way, but in your dad's case, by the time he went out looking for four other women, there was something he was missing at home. No, 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 he, you know, when we were standing on his bedside, and fortunately, no, fortunately he did not die. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, we, we realized that 
we didn't know anything about this guy. We didn't know, like, uh, we didn't know uh, anything about his property. We didn't know anything about like his other kids that would come if something was ask? to happen. How was I supposed how, to ask? How am I supposed how to you ask? ask your dad? dad how am I supposed to ask? Did your I, thing how am I supposed to ask? I asked. I, I asked. Is 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 this uh, is this part of our your assets? So you, I, no, you, I knew. I knew. Listen, food. I knew his assets. I, I, I knew part of his assets. Mm -hmm. But when this know. guy was almost kicking it, is when I realized this guy has assets. In other way. countries. Well, Peter, Peter, the problem with yeah. you, a child asking the father, are these are assets, it's almost like you're wishing him to die. To die yes. <laughs> and, and that's not you a good like example. A but, also, yeah. but also the power between the distance, the power distance between parents and children is so great now, I mean, always, that, that you can't sort of, you can't sort of First of all, you'll be told it's none of your business. Go get work, go to school, but, 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 work but, hard, yeah, make your exactly money. There, yeah. might, there are questions you must ask because now that we've we've raised the discussion to another level secession planning is everybody's responsibility when you said that what about the woman who was from the rural area and did not know the assets that her husband had you know if he's not revealing that no, she was you, she was just not capable of dealing with it she, okay oh, what? but their children but their children with <laughs> <laughs> Their children in the Wait, wait, wait. Peter, what happens what to these kids? What do you mean to deal with it? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what, because what I don't want to reveal too much, because I don't have permission to reveal that. But, in, and you know, guys, let's not act today like we are naive. No, no. There are certain people who, even let's be honest, when I'm using your words, you meet the guy with his wife and you're like, oh my gosh, this guy is in trouble. But love is blind. Whose words are those? Whose words are those? We are here at the Naguru Skies Hotel talking about succession. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back Am after I the what? break. Welcome back from the break. In case you've just joined us, you are just in time for the last segment of this show when we are talking about succession. Now, believe it or not, um, whether we can act like we are living in a super society, there are a lot of men out there, and you men, you can tell me, who are scared of their wives. They hide property, okay, because they don't want their wives to know about it. Chris, why? you are saying that it's because they have other women. No. No, no, no. Because, no. Why, why, why is that? Yeah, because because they, their women are stupid. No. no come that, on. That's what you basically said before, before the break. No, uh, uh, no I don't say that. It's not for women okay. to, right? kill, to kill and murder. And this is in the in very recent future, in the very recent past, it's not unheard of. It's not uncommon for women to kill their husbands once they know the extent so, so why, of why, the man's so, wealth. So why, why, is that a, why is that so? It's because you, you have basically, she, she works with you to get to a certain level of success and then you take her out of the equation. But why does that, does that see, even make sense to you? That's the thing, but why would he do that? No, so my point, my, and, and here is actually where we need to have the whole, the whole discussion about, about, about bringing the girl child into the equation um, in inheritance and wealth and this kind of thing. So, so let me just speak directly to you, Peter. Here's a problem we have. Because Peter has a girl child. Yes, she's, he's got a girl child, and 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 he sometimes. And she's going to plan like, to finish me. Yeah, no, no. You, you sometimes talk like you, you don't have a girl child. So here's a problem we have. Okay. The, the problem we have is that if you have a girl child who who um uh, you raise to be responsible, a leader, someone who goes out to to you know to make a difference in the world, earn money, etc. etc gets married to this guy who um, same raised the same way, okay? So they work and, and, and they come from this level to that level. And they've got all this wealth. And the guy is insisting that, you know, because I'm the head of the family, the property has got to be in my name, mm -hmm. right? Problem one. So we're, we're, we're making all this money, but it's not, my name doesn't appear in, on, in all these land titles. It's, it's in his name. Okay? And, and you know, and wait, this, this is wait. so real. I, it's so real. It's so so real. wait. So, increasingly, I see myself edged out of the equation, and, and, and it's basically him. You know, you know, in the chemistry thing, where the whole equation is one guy on this side and on the other side, it doesn't make any sense, right? Uh -huh. so, so now, the thing is that, as that increasingly happens, the guy starts siphoning off some money and, and, and having property that, that he can basically be able to do whatever he wills with, 
right? You mean like and, give and, to his and, other children, and give to his side dishes, but, yes, but, and, and stuff but like Chris, that. But Chris, just before, and can I, I ask I you just... That that's absolutely the problem. No, but can I ask you one simple question? Yeah. Is uh, Because like we said, we know these things happen. Exactly. It's not an isolated case. There are a number of people who are exactly. doing it. Are they crazy? So Peter, why would a woman who co-owns, who owns the property with you, why would she want to kill you? If it has stuff already. Okay. You guys are talking about you guys are talking about this is a very woman. idealistic talk because in reality, no. if we talk about absolute statistics, a large percentage of women, a large percentage across the country are homemakers. So they, 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 I think the argument isn't someone who you've built this business with because sometimes men will feel like, you know what, I was, you are raising the kids, so I'm leaving you the family home and a little bit of it, but the rest of the empire that I've built with my own hands, out of my own sweat, I should have the liberty to do with as I, as I please. It's, it's faulty thinking, but it's the existing current thought process that exists. And I this guess is, that's this a problem. This is a patriarchal society. You could be a woman, married holy matrimony to a man, but to keep up appearances, you've worked to get the assets, you've worked to build the business, but you need to have the man at the forefront. He needs to look like he, he looks. He, he, First of all, you get more business like, than he's at the forefront. Yeah. Let me give you another example. No, really. Let me give yes, you it happens in a an lot. example. In, 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 uh, My wife you is know, in the construction industry. Trust me, I know. You put, you put a woman I there. I know any <laughs> businesses where well, it's the woman who's leading. Let me, let me, let me, let me, in certain yeah. industries. Okay, let me finish. There's a scenario I wanted to share in vernacular. What? And I'm going Here to speak in, in Luganda. Uh -huh. They'll have to interpret for you, Peter, <laughs> <laughs> because you're suffering. Now, um, there was a, a, a gentleman who passed away. Ngafude arimu, you know, omugenzi, omulam baguta de mudiro. Kakati nga namuando atudawa arimu maziga, kaba maziga, bo nabari mudiro, bakaba maziga. Kakati, omchalo omuna yingida, gakuto muano muto, omulenzi. Na tuka kumulambo. Na gamba. Kakati, munange, onde sewa nobuoti. Ono kakati ya fuse ba wange. Chino chichiche endiko. Immediately, oh. the widow who's crying tears stopped crying huh? because this is the moment of truth. Hmm? There's now another woman. In, the narrative has changed. There's now another woman. Co-wife shows up co -wife with the baby. Shows up. Not co-wife. Meanwhile, She's just the brothers woman. are scrambling to get the other woman. Now they say, "You, huh? How can you come?" no jangu orabo mulambo kakati otani sokaba masoga abantu over dechi ah tojaku zika. So, at that moment of truth, you realize that there's another household that my husband has had. Time to wipe those tears, hmm? and now we need to get to business. Go into the Bedroom, huh? the gather, all, the gather all the titles. <laughs> exactly, because at the end of the day, you're the woman holy matrimony, and you know it's it's that I think that's the reality. A lot of but where is that coming from? That's my question. I, 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 let me answer. Small, yes, quick question, quick answer. It come it comes from cheating and being infidelity. No. 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 no, 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 so, no, so listen, I had any of these. It, it, it comes know, from I know, some of, I know of men who have just brought home children, okay, and told their wives, "This is, this my, is son. my son." This is deal with it. Peter, 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 okay. is the problem in all the examples mm. you're giving. Don't so you Peter, see Peter, it? Peter, the problem, the problem is this. Yeah. The problem is this. When a guy can bring a child home mm -hmm. and say, this is my child, it means there are no questions on his ability to provide, to raise that child. He's yeah. a total authoritarian in that sort of structure. If you're the guy who pays rent, and you pay school fees and everything else is taken care of by your wife, yeah. you're not going to just bring another mouth in the house, please. Understand, and that is that and, is the structure of family. Let me let me let me correct her. Let me, let, let me say something. You know, it's not, it's not. We we in Africa, it's not that you know if you're officially married in church, you're the wife. Of course, you're the there wife. Is, there is uh, the government also you know uh, uh, recognizes recognizes yeah. women who, who are, <laughs> you have been married well, in cohabited a, you know for, cohabited for for a long time. For six but years. this comes down to patriarchal traditional mm. conditioning of men. Men have this thing that I have to hide. There's something that we're dealing right now. I'm dealing with right now As with my dad. Man. No, with my dad right oh. now. My dad is somewhat losing his mind. Uh, and this is very personal. Is yeah, I, I'm saying it. I'm very people know me for 
being very open. My dad is losing his mind right now. And we do not know. You know, I'm just realizing that this guy's been hiding so much. And it comes down to what she said. It has to be intentional. This whole idea that, you know, I'm a man and your dad told you something when you were old, you need to start telling your kids that this is... Oh, that's the point. This but, is... Can, so, so, can so, I just... Can I just... Can I just... Can I just... Just a minute. I just want, I just want to, 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 um, to say something to Stefan here. Stefan, do you realize that this church thing I was talking about, intentional, structured, disciplined, is something you've caught For the Christ. first time, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm just letting you know. It's very helpful. Okay, so I, just want, um, I just want to clarify something. Um, succession comes from the word succeed. Okay. I mean, everybody wants success. I don't know of anybody on the foot of this earth who just wants to fail. I don't think that is. It doesn't matter what, is, what you're up against. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants the generations coming behind them, especially in their life, to succeed. So by the time somebody is hiding something, all right, and just shooting off what he say, there must be a reason. And it can't just be because I'm a cheat, I'm a philanderer, I mean, that's it, so I'm going to tuck stuff. Could it be that men inherently are gatherers? Because we do that as men. We gather stuff. And not inherently hide us. Conditioned, not inherently. Like not inherently. Exactly. <laughs> we are not so, so what's wrong with <laughs> the ones who gather and hide? My point exactly. That's the question I'm asking. It's, 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 not, it's, it's one of those things we do. Peter, so Peter. they're not mad, are they? Peter, Peter. Peter. So, so, <laughs> so you, tell me, you tell me you've worked your whole life and, you know, judging by your lack of hair, you've worked a really long <laughs> and hard life. <laughs> You I am here, just today. that you can't you see. You pass on today and you have no hair, where? Well? <laughs> <laughs> you pass on today. Your brother shows up, deadbeat dude, shows up and wants, because this was my brother's house, I want this house, I'll take this car and I'll take these things. I have a will. I okay. know you have a will. Wow. But do you know that 90% of all men out there, and I know this because, let me tell you, NSSF, those guys at NSF came to our office to tell us. They said to us, if you die without a will, this is what happens. This is what the government, all your property goes to the government. 85% of that property gets given to your known children. Anyone who can prove that the child of yours takes 85%. The other 15% goes to all your known spouses. Spouse means someone who has bared for your child. Whether you want to see them or wow. you will never see them again, they'll get 15%. This is the problem about the lack of information. Guys just think, ah, you know what? My brother will come and divide my things according to how we have discussed. But the lack of not writing that thing down ends you up. So someone, you had a child 20 years ago, you've never seen them. May God strike you dead if they cast your shadow. They're in your living room taking your property because you're careless and you're afraid to plan. You know, it, it is so stupid that, you know, men don't plan. And it, it, it's, it's also very sad. Right now, I, I, it is, I'm trying to get money to take my dad to hospital, which he has lots of money. Yes. And I cannot access it. Yes. And the problem uh, go, uh, goes down to planning. If he was a free man, if he is a free man, and so many, and, it, and, and, and I say this earlier on, traditional stupid conditioning of men that, you know, you have to hide some things. Like, you know, if my dad, he, he told me something when I was dying that this is your property. Times have changed. Men need to grow up. So, but so, also so, as, as, as children of the household, you need to task your, your, your father and your mother to ask the questions. So, what so, belongs to us? Because so, now, Ruth. when you're talking about the will, for me, I would say you go beyond the will. You have a written will, but also do a video and, and, and actually... Okay, come on, yes. you have to be too modern <laughs> No, because yeah, yeah. wills can yeah. be contested. Or use your phone. Producer, yeah. I think you broke the yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I think it, yeah. You need to have Selfie. a will and then be able to articulate that will and, and, and actually speak and document and record it and have those recordings submitted to, you know, so, so, so Peter, yes. Peter, the, 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 the small challenge we're having here is that we, I feel like there's a certain train, trend of thought that we lost, which, which actually comes from the show we had last week, which is about when, when you're casting a vision as a guy uh, for your family and what you want to achieve and where you want your family to go and that kind of thing, so you work hard into that future, all right? Um, ideally, 
and and here is where I say ideally, yes, <laughs> textbook ideally, okay, <laughs> yeah. all right, ideally, ideally it should be that that you keep on painting the picture of the future and bringing your family along, yeah, all right, and so so I I think that it really helps because I know that there are some people who will never write that thing because to them because of traditional taboo or whatever it is. They feel like they are writing their death sentence. Mm -hmm. Most lawyers, are, right? by the way, don't. Right? So, so, so what I'm saying is that if you can't write it, at least let people in your family know. I mean, this thing is as simple as that, that traditional healing man, the medicine man yeah. or the medicine woman. They decide, somehow they decide that among my kids, this is the one who will learn after me. So they take them on their back to the forest when they're picking all these herbs and things like that. They watch as they are mixing this stuff. So this kid has a 20, year, 20 years of studying how of studying to mix the herbs. Mm. No. So when the parent passes on, it's very easy for everyone Peter, knows this is the Peter, kid who Peter, knows Peter, you, okay. know, you know the thing so, that, no, I'm going to let you do the closing show, but just understand this. Yeah. How can you expect, and this is the unrealistic thing about some of us. This guy is struggling to sort of set it up. Chris is, you know, talking about it as he ministers to people. You know, the perfect example is here, Ruth. But uh, how are you expecting this to happen at a family level if we cannot even start generating this kind of conversation at a national level? Your parting shot. Here comes national level. My parting shot is very simple. I'm going to echo from, uh, I'm going to echo what she said. Ruth. It has to be, Ruth, it has to be intentional. Many to plan. It is that serious, you know, this is not uh, 17th century. You have to bring the, the, the girl child in the picture. This whole idea that, you know, I have to tell my oldest son. The oldest son must be a drunk or a stupid guy. Plan. <laughs> bring everyone in the picture. You know, if, if you want this, you know, if you want your, 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 your line to be successful in the future, you need to plan. And that's it. You know I mean? Cool. Great stuff. Colin, your parting shot. I think that this whole situation comes from short-termism. People who are poor and they came from nothing, they make something of themselves and they want it to end with them. That's what this is. A lot of it is, is that. It's, I came from nothing and I've bought all this stuff and I don't really, I just want to give it out how I want. But if you think about it, the world's wealthiest families have been built and sustained on the fact that the property and assets remain consolidated. They remain within a known and visible space. So that if we say that, you know, certain assets will never be sold, they'll never be sold. That's it. Mm. And, and I think that you have to, men have to see that. You have to understand that the best gift you can give your children is a stepping stone for them to fight in the new level mm. that you've put them. So you came from a two, you're dying at a nine. Your child should start life at, as an 11. They shouldn't go back to a two, two yeah. to start and work because they're moving into the teens because they will work and pack at a 21. So their children will begin at a 23. That's the thinking that you have to sort of adopt. So my parting shot, take the time to know exactly what you're building. And I think if you think back from where we were last week, if you cast your vision and you do your mission and you do that well, it will be easy to identify what the path is yeah. and what you're going to leave behind. Because then it clarifies the purpose, it clarifies the purpose. And, and once you do that, mm -hmm. know that the government is always there. Okay. You cannot dispossess people. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, yeah. you're, you're part uh, so, so, so two things I'll say real quick. One is um, Solomon. It must be in the book of Ecclesiastes where he talks about, um, he asks men a question. He says, okay, you, you, may, you may stock up wealth and keep it for... Uh, your heir and, and he says how would you how do you know if your heir will not be a fool dash your son and for me that made me think many years ago that it's possible that that we may think male is good and yet female is better in particular circumstances uh, for example when you look at the Sam Sam Walton who left his empire to his children but his daughter Walmart the whole Walmart uh, supermarket thing his daughter has actually been in the driving seat and has grown the business leading her brothers. Yeah. So what I'm saying about that is that let's not choose between male and female. Let's choose leaders who can be able to move the family further, okay. whether they be male or they be female. It's also good the, to have the useless second, children. Short, um, <laughs> second thing, the, 
the second thing I want to say is let's leave out our plan. Mm -hmm. Let it be very clear with everyone yeah. what our plan is, who is in charge of what, what your desire is. Mm -hmm. Let the children and your spouse and everybody get to know your business, get to know your contacts, get to know everything so that you don't end up being in a scenario like where Stefan is, which is, yeah. you know, really sad. Um, he knows there is assets and resource, yeah. but he can't access it because the guy didn't leave out the plan for Stefan to know all the contacts that can unlock the wealth. Cool. My dear, yes. your parting shot. My parting shot has to do with um, secession planning is really uh, a call to be a visionary. Mm -hmm. And again, I go back to the man being the head of the household. I'll give the example of the late Dr. James Murana. Mm -hmm. um, may his soul rest in peace. He uh, built up an empire. Um, the family is moving forward. Um, Barbara is the executive director. Um, Primrose is running Jessa Farms. Um, Jeffrey is in Uganda Batteries. There is a plan that was left and a platform for them to move the process forward. So I believe it's, imp it's imperative and it's a responsibility and it must be intentional to have that in place, a vision of where you want this process to move forward once you're out of the equation. Okay. Well, great stuff. Well, you've heard it from the men. You're one of them. The men. And the lady. <laughs> and the lady here at the Naguru Skies Hotel. Mine is just one simple thing. It's not really about having money, even if you are not one of the wealthy, well-to-do ones. Everybody should have a plan. Just as Colin said, let your kids start from a higher level than you started. With those few words, have a good night, God bless, take care of yourselves, and we will see you next week.